This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back with my favorite show, right, Maria? Yeah. Hawaii, the state of clean energy. That's Maria Tomei, the co-chair. Hey there. I mean, co-host. Co-host. And co-chair, too. Well, if it's a committee, sure. <laughs> we call ourselves a committee. To my left is uh, Shannon Tanganon, and she's with Hawaiian Electric. She's a, a spokes lady for Hawaiian Electric. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for having we us. We want to hear everything that you do and everything that you want to say. We want it all. <laughs> well, today we want to focus on our um, computer software being upgraded and how it might affect our customers. So we're going to be cutting over to our new system um, September 28th through October 1st. So we just wanted to let customers know that we are going to have some, uh, you know, delays perhaps and then we also won't have a lot of our customer information like their customer account information readily available on september 28th and october 1st okay so how, how will this affect me i mean in the, the kind of contacts i might have with wine electric if i want to what pay my bill yeah if you want to pay me? your bill yeah. or if you want to find out how much your bill is you okay. know call um, you have to have your account number when you do call on okay. the 28th and the first after that, it'll be better. After you can that, search on my name, I guess. Yes, yeah. after that, it'll, it'll be better. But we are preparing folks in advance for possible delays because it is a new system mm -hmm. and our employees are navigating the new system. So we just want people to know that, you know, it'll take a little bit of time for us to get totally up to speed. And We know. love new systems. Yeah, we you love know, really, yeah. I, You know, sometimes yeah. it's hard. It's, you know, yeah. I remember Neil Abercrombie wanted to upgrade the whole state. Whole state, everything, and uh, he he really thought that he was going to do that. But you know, and he brought in a uh, a guy, uh, Sonny Bagwalia was his name, from Washington, from GSA. They were going to look at every computer in the state, and it took him two years to write a report. And he wrote a report. He said, "The system is really, really old." Thank you. <laughs> 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 and pr pretty much, you know, that the idea was that. You take all these little disparate systems, you make them yes. into one system, and now you're in the 21st century. It's good. Yes. And I, I take it that's what's happening. That's here. what's happening. We're trying to get all our legacy systems, you know, that can't communicate with one another. We're, you know, getting rid of that, and then we're putting in a whole universal system that can handle all our accounting, HR, whatever, you know, whatever we need. So it's internal and external, internal both. Internal and external, yes. And I, I take it that this is, um, uh, I don't need to get a new computer to look at, to look at your page. Your no, page will no. change. My computer doesn't have to change. No, your computer does not have to change. I just go on your website, and it'll be faster and you know have more information. It'll be connected better, yeah. Well, yeah, in some ways. I mean, what we want to just make sure people know is that on September 28th through October 1st, you won't be able to to do um, to call in without having your account number. You know, you have to have that kind of information. If you go to our payment centers, you'll need to have a remittance stub so that you have proper credit being applied to your account. You know, these kinds of things that you don't normally have to have. Yeah. We just ask that customers be aware that you know you'll, you'll have to, to have this information. Information, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the transition will be over in a few days, and then you'll be up and running on the new system? Yeah, we'll be up and running, but again, we do want to caution that, you know, we could have um, higher call volume, so there could oh, be yeah. some delays. Yeah. Um, really, if you're planning a move at the end of the, the month, September 28th through October 1st, please don't call during that time frame to start, stop, or relocate service. We just want you to call now and schedule it ahead That's of time. That's a good idea. Yeah, otherwise you'll be subject to, you know, perhaps a three yeah. to five business days delay. Yeah, get it in the database right away. Yeah. So um, is, is, is the balance between going online on, on the Hawaiian Electric uh, website and doing things and making calls to Hawaiian Electric at the regular number, is that going to change? Is it still going to be both? It's still going to be both, yeah. but both will be affected during that time yeah, oh yeah, because, yeah. The, yeah. because the phones will be connected yes, to the whole yes. system. Is it true that 
when I call and I get a recorded voice, it's going to be yours, Shannon? No, no, it won't be mine. <laughs> <laughs> could, could they fix that and include you? I like your sure. voice. <laughs> Thank you. But no, it won't be my voice. But what we do want to let people know is that we won't be um, doing any automated calls during that time period as well. So you won't get the reminder calls for, oh, you know, hey, okay. you have to pay your bill. Okay. Um, and if you do get calls during that time period, you might want to, you know, be suspicious Wonder because we want to make yeah. sure that the scammers aren't, you know. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, what's it going to be like when everything is in place? When everything is in place, everyone is, is good to go. I mean, it will be, we'll be a much more efficient operation. Yeah. Everything will be streamlined. So we just hope... You know, that'll be a quick, should all work a quick together project. Get there. Yeah. yeah. Be patient with you. Yeah. So you're going to be on all, all the uh, Hawaiian Electric Islands, uh, Big Island, Maui, yeah. uh, Molokai, Molokai, and Oahu. Yeah. 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 And Lanai, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be good. Yeah. You can exchange information. Uh, exactly. And the machines will talk to each other. It'll be easier, yeah. Most definitely. Good. It'll be a lesson to us all. Um, let's talk one more thing. Uh, let's talk about hurricanes. We have Norman and Olivia. I can't make up my mind which is my favorite. Um, <laughs> right now, Norman is no, my favorite. Okay, you're, you're yeah. rooting for Norman. <laughs> <laughs> because he's not, no, no, you know. No, no, right. no. Okay, well, so well, well, he's not headed right toward okay, us. Good. Yeah. Stay away. Yeah. yeah. So um, what are you doing, if anything, uh, to prepare? What, 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 is, uh, you know, what is the plan, if any? Well, we're still operating, and so, you know, we're, we're monitoring very closely the activities of both hurricanes, and we just want to make sure that our company is ready. Um, we were, we had that scare with Lane, so we've kind of been through this exercise, you know, in recent weeks, so we're really preparing. We know where to position people, you know, we're monitoring the storms and hoping for the best. Yeah, we all are. They're happening more frequently now, though. It's like one after the other, it seems I know, like. Yeah. I know. Yeah, well, Here. maybe maybe the world will get smart and stop emitting carbon. And, oh, we and hope so. And we'll be better off. Maria, do you want to ask any questions? No, I'm good. I uh, <laughs> wish you well and uh, Thank you. Do your thing. Thank you. And the man in the middle who's been silent up to this point <laughs> is Robert Morita from the Honolulu Board of Water Supply. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. And uh, do you have any questions you'd like to put to Shannon? <laughs> oh, putting you on the spot. <laughs> no questions, but you know, the the we're we consider ourselves sister utilities, um, and because we're we're almost joined at the hip, because as long as Hawaiian Electric is able to deliver power, uh, water should basically be in good shape mm -hmm. during a disaster. Uh, 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 it's when we separate ourselves. If, if we lose power for an extended period, short periods, mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can tolerate that. But extended periods um, causes a lot of heartache and yeah. um, challenges. Least, uh, we're going to talk more about that in a minute, in exactly a minute, because at this point we're going to say farewell, I hate to say farewell, to Shannon, and then we're going to take a minute break and we'll come back and she won't even be here, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk to Robert exclusively after that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Come back soon. Okay, I will. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. I can play, so I ain't chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, so we do it. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at one o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone. And I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here together. Just us guys. Huh? Alone at last. Huh? <laughs> Talk about the guys. Water. The guys. Yeah. Okay, and if you don't remember, that's Maria Tomei. Next time, remember, be on the exam. <laughs> and Robert Marita, he yes. is the executive assistant at the Honolulu Board of Water Supply. This is sort of the quietest utility around, actually. We don't hear that much about you. Oh, and that's the way we like it. But keep on pumping, so yes, to say. Yes, right. Right. <laughs> you, we try to stay out of the news as much as possible, so... The less the less news, the better. So you're right there, and uh, you know it's a, and you have you have great Christmas decorations, <laughs> and the water is always you know coming off that fountain you have mm -hmm. right in front mm -hmm. of your property there. Yeah, you would have. It's it's amazing at how many people look forward to those displays every year, and the fountain is is a prominent piece of that that decoration, even though it's there all year round. We should appreciate you more. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. I agree. Okay, you were talking before about the relationship of electricity right. and water. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, so, you know, Shannon was a great lead into it. So, you know, we've, ever since Hurricane Hector gave us a pretty good scare, we've been effectively on standby uh, for, for hurricanes. And we haven't had a whole lot of time. It's been maybe a week or two bef between these major, major hurricane systems. So we now have Norman and Olivia uh, basically doing a beeline for the islands. Um, we're staying in close contact with National Weather Service, with Department of Emergency Management, uh, um, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency as well, um, staying on top of things, making sure that we're prepared should the direction turn a little bit, because it, it doesn't take a whole lot of directional change in order for it to really affect the islands. So, we're in the process now of we've pre-staged um, many of our um, mobile generators. We, we're highly dependent on electricity to run our pumps in order to draw the water from the wells and to distribute it throughout the, um, throughout the, the island. The mobile generator is you can, it's a truck or something. It's a trailer drive mounted. It out to a location. Yes, exactly. Where the pump that's ordinarily there is not working. Is that the idea? In case the, the, we should lose power for an extended period. Um, we have mobile generators that can that are powerful enough to restart motors to draw waters from from uh, deep depths um, and to push water to the, the areas where we need the water to be. I know this is going to sound like a silly question, but you have the truck mm -hmm. and the truck has a big pump in it, mm -hmm. yeah? and now there's a pipe down under the street. How do I get the water from the pipe into the truck? and then back from the truck into the other pipe. Well, it's actually, so the gen, it's a generator. So we're, we're just delivering power off of that mobile oh, generator. Okay, the okay. pumps stay the where pump they're- The pump is exactly where it is. Yeah, it's in that fixed location. So you take it and you connect, you connect the, we the connect, power- We connect the wires the <laughs> from the and generator the to the pumps. are underground or are they overground? They're, they're above ground. For the most it's part, they're in above In a little steel box somewhere. It, they're in a building. So a lot of times you will see that, um, you'll see our, our very, this, Distinguished looking Board of Water Supply buildings. They're green. They have an Art Deco type of look and feel <laughs> to them. They've been around for Branding, a while. Yeah, yeah they're, they've been around for a while, but you know, they're very, you know, they, they've been around, around for so long that they, they blend into yeah. the environment. Yeah, but you'll see them in the neighborhoods. Likes that, the color and a the yeah. little drop of water. Yep. Yeah. It's, water is, is for life. And we were talking before, you know, how long can you exist without water in your body? Not long. Uh, I wouldn't want to test that. It's a matter of days and you're in trouble. You're right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that's why, you know, water is life. That's, that's our, our theme. That, uh, it's important to sustain your life as well as for, for, to develop, to, to grow your foods uh, and everything else. So it's, it's, uh, it's a critical piece in, as part of the overall emergency management plan for this state is to con to ensure the continued delivery of water. So let's assume that we have a, a bad storm. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that the power goes out right. in a given neighborhood or, or even a larger area. Um, 
let's assume, and this sounds like a good assumption, that you can't have water unless somebody is pumping it to you. Right. No pump, no, no electric, no pump, no water, mm -hmm. no nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you're really thirsty. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and you don't have a long time to live without water. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that stands for you alone, but it also stands for everybody in the community because we don't do well without water. Um, okay, so how, what do you do when the electricity goes out so your electric pumps, you know, mm -hmm. don't work? Don't work. So the, that's the first, the first fallback are the mobile generators. That they, run on, they, ro they run on diesel fuel. But again, when you're in a crisis situation, fuel also now becomes a commodity that has to be carefully managed. Because not only uh, as, as important as we truly believe water to be, there's also things like hospitals that, that, that need water um, or that need, that need fuel rather to, to continue their, their services there. Um, so there's competing interests for, for the fuel. These are diesel generators. Um, right. in, in trucks, that you, do, you, do you have enough of them to, um, to, to service every pump? No, um, and we were very open about that. Um, when we did uh, an estimate, and these, these, the, the mobile generators that we have, they're strategically placed to service the greatest number of, of households and accounts. Um, we can, prob if, if everything was deployed properly and we are in a situation where we need to solely rely on generators, we can service roughly 70% of, of the island. But you know, that's one of the things that scares us too. 70% sounds like a good number, but on an island like Oahu with a million plus people, you know, we're talking about 300,000 people who may not have water delivered to their homes. Well, if you can't provide um, generated electricity to those 30 percent, the 30 percent of the pumps, I guess it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that the people uh, in, in, in that area won't get any water or they'll get water at a very low pressure? What does it mean? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, there, we do have some systems that are gravity fed, so it's not solely dependent on, on electricity to get water. And it'll be at a greatly reduced pressure, but it will have some water delivered to them. In, in a crisis like that, we would um, basically be deploying, um, we call them water buffaloes. They're the small water, water trucks. Water truck you see them at our, our main breaks um, to service the neighborhoods when they're completely uh, cut off from water as we repair the, the water lines. But these are typically 300 gallons. Uh, so they would require constant refilling. Yeah. Um, they would probably be on the road. So in a widespread outage, you know, we would probably have to fill them, service a the neighborhood, um, service as many, get, some water. get where, water where, and move them to another Where's the head station in, in Honolulu for water? Where, where would they go to pick up the water? Uh, these would probably be from our major pump stations or the reservoirs, which um, can continue to get water refilled into it. So uh, like right near the Board of Water Supply headquarters on Baratania Street. There's the Baratania pump station at the top of Kapahula Avenue. There's the Kamuki pump, pump station in Kalihi. Um, so there's several of these locations. So if, if my neighborhood's part of that 30%, then I have to... We would have challenges. Um, I, I have to get out and find the truck. Right. How would I know the truck is there? And what would I take with me to the truck you know, I'd have to have some container. You would have my to, container, not yours. Yeah. Um, right, right. Um, you would have to bring a container along and realize, too, that, that water is really bulky. Um, and heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So water, about a gallon, weighs almost 10 pounds, I think, uh, around there. Yeah. So, you know, unless you're in really good shape, you know, to carry a couple of gallons of water is, is a challenge for, for most people. And the, the farther distance that you have to travel, the more difficult it becomes. So that is part of our, our challenge. And so that's why we preach every hurricane season for, to, for each household, for each resident to take the steps necessary to prepare themselves. Um, At this point, Maria, you probably want to ask Robert what those steps are. Sure. <laughs> yeah, funny, in fact, funny, in yeah. fact you know, timing-wise, I saw an article um, in the paper, I mm -hmm. think Lee Cataluna's yeah. Um, yeah. column said, 
You know, if you don't buy water, then you don't have to, you know, try to take it back to the, not that you should be you taking it back. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, you can, you can store it. I mean, if you have a hurricane coming or if you have advance notice, you can store some. But sure. also, you want to have a little bit at least stored for events that you can't have several hours of advance notice, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. So, and uh, there's, there's what do you recommend? Well, there's nothing wrong with, with bottled water, um, like for that situation you just, yeah. you just spoke about. Um, it can be supplemented with the water that you get from your taps. So having clean containers, mm -hmm. uh, wash them out with a, a simple bleach solution. Um, just have, using your household Clorox with some water, rinsing out a container. Um, it should be good enough for a short-term storage solution. And effectively, you know, the way our water rates are set up today, um, you can effectively get a thousand gallons of water for five dollars. That's what it would cost an average resident that, here. Yeah, that's that's regular water, regular rates. Yes. So, yep. what about catchment? I mean, is there, is there any point in me having something in my house? I can have solar in my house. That's kind of renewable. Mm -hmm. What about catchment? That's renewable too, isn't it? Yeah, catchment. Um, we wouldn't necessarily recommend it for consumption, but it, it gets could contaminate. It, it. You never know what's in it. And without proper testing, we, we would never know. But um, it is extremely helpful, say, for, for sanitation. Um, so you still need to deal with so flushing, toilet. flushing toilets, yeah. um, doing the dishes, doing, doing wash, simple laundry, that type of thing. That is very beneficial to that. Then you don't have to give up your bottled water supply yeah. to fill your toilet. Right. Use that for drinking, taking yes. pills, what have you. Right. Um, what, what about this... Um, what is the word for it? The bladder? Mm -hmm. it's, what's the, it's, it's uh, the there's trade a, name? The, the water bladder, or there's a water bob. Um, water bob, that, that's right, it, water right, bob. Yeah. Right. What, what, what is that? How does that work? Uh, it's basically a plastic liner that you can um, use in your bathtub, and it has a fill spout as well. It has also a, a dispensing pump as well. So you, you put that in your bathtub, you hook, connect it to your bathtub spout, and fill it. And uh, when I looked at it, I think if you fill a standard bathtub just to its brim, it's about 60 gallons. And that's all potable. That's all drinkable water. Because it came out of the, uh, uh, out of the spout. Right. And the, the plastic, that, that water bob, is, yeah. is, is food-grade plastic. So it's but you have to leave it in the, in the, in the, in the bathtub because at it's the rate of, heavy. would you say, it's, 10 yeah. pounds per gallon? It's 8.34. That would yeah. be 600 it's, it's heavy. Yeah. Pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're. Um, so let's say you're worried about a hurricane. You fill that thing up, mm -hmm. and then what do you and do at the hurricane? You know, hurricane goes away. Yeah. We all relax. Right. So and that's the difficulty of that one. In that uh, the water bob, it's a great product. Um, I have I not gotten one yet, <laughs> but it's it's on my my list of things to get. It's on your wish. List. It, it is. It is. <laughs> okay. Hopefully Santa will be nice this year. But um, it, it's, it's marketed as a disposable product. So oh. unfortunately, it's, it's really, from my understanding, it's, it's difficult because it's, a, not, not, it's not a sealed system, but it's just difficult for you to get rid of the water and dry it out properly so that... You don't um, get green stuff growing basically, in. Basically, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So, so, you know, when you're talking about disinfecting things before you put the water in, mm -hmm. and I, I saw some recommendation, one cap full per gallon. Uh, probably uh, for that's I think to if you were to rinse it out to yeah, wash it, yeah, you would yeah. go with that high of a concentration. Yeah. Um, so bleach, of uh, unscented bleach. Yeah. They said cap full. I'm like, how many ounces is that? Is that like one ounce? Uh, I think or? that's that's a bit heavy. We yeah. basically we just recommend one drop per gallon. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it, it for, would it would have a, a noticeable taste. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To it with a, the cap full per gallon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that does the same thing as boiling. Um, in the short term, in the short term, and you know, we, we put that out as an alternative because, say, you're in a situation where you lose power, um, then a lot of people don't have that chance to. They, they they don't have the means to boil water. Okay, let me let me carry the hypothetical further, the scenario, so to speak. <laughs> More doomsday. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Okay. A little, you know, sure. just so people can get sort of a reality thing on this. <laughs> sure. So, <clears throat> all right. So the the, the power goes out. Mm -hmm. You're using those trucks, trying to cover as much territory as you can, okay. um, and and you have fuel, but you don't have an indefinite supply of fuel. Right. 
So, and you actually have fuel. Right now, today, you have fuel. In case we had a hurricane in 10 minutes, you'd have fuel. Right. Um, okay, you take the trucks out. Ultimately, and I'm just working on logic here, the fuel runs out. Mm -hmm. No fuel. Right. No fuel, no electricity, no pump, no water. What happens then? Uh, then we rely heavily on those gravity-fed systems that I mentioned. Um, it'll be at a reduced pressure for sure, but we would still be able to draw water from our sources. But then it becomes, that, that is sort of the, the worst case scenario where we lose power for basically in indefinite period. And then the, the, the fuel reserves start to dwindle. Um, right. then and even those trucks require fuel. Right. I mean, the trucks, what did you call them, those trucks? The, the trucks with the spigot on it, those trucks. Oh, the water buffaloes. The, the water uh, buffalo trucks. Yeah, right. They require fuel to get where they need to go. So, mm -hmm. you know, right, so. right, 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 right. Uh, but it's all part and parcel of the whole challenge that we have in, in emergency planning. So if we're in that scenario as well, we're, we're talking island-wide devastation. The roadways may not be clear. Couldn't get there anyway. Yeah, debris clearance is a, is a, is a huge concern. Um, this island has a lot of albizias. You know, they're, they're, they're big. They're, All right down on the road. They're shallow rooted. Um, right and Kiko up. hates them with a passion, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and they can, they, they can cause a lot of damage. So that's high on the priority list um, as far as, you know, if the roadways are clear, then at least we have a chance to um, reposition some of our assets where, where the water is needed or where the power is needed for the emergency generators. Okay, well, let me, let me go one step further then. Okay, so we recover. Okay. Okay, from this um, flood, uh, hurricane, earthquake, tsunami, whatever it is, okay. we recover. Um, and you turn it back on. You have power okay. and the, you can make the pumps work and now the, elect, the electricity and the pumps and everything getting water at the far end. I turn my faucet on. I'm happy. Is that water going to be as clear and clean and pure as ordinarily, or am I have to going to have to worry about contamination because of the, you know, the uh, the disaster? Immediately after the disaster, you know, we would be out there testing all of the sources as, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, probably in that under that circumstance, just out of an abundance of caution, we would issue a boil water notice. So we would be advising all residents um, through whatever means you can, uh, boil your water for, for two minutes to make sure that we take care of any contaminants that's, that's in the water until we can get all our full testing done. Once the testing is done, then section by section, area by area on the island, we can let them know that, okay, this, this particular source is fine to drink straight out of the tap without any type of additional work required. And you know exactly who your customers are on that source. Yes, right. You, and you know who your customers are on a source that may they be contaminated correct, as well. Correct, correct. So you go house to house or? Um, through whatever means are, are whatever possible. Means. Whatever yeah. the yeah. means are possible. Remember that radio? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. Well, communication I mean, is very communication important. Communication is everything, yeah. really, in a situation like that. Yeah, and that's why we love the, um, the CERT teams on Oahu, the, uh, uh, community emergency response teams that are out there Th that's like the boots on the ground and these not only for us but for I think all the other government agencies as well you know they're 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 good community organizations out there and they're well prepared to communicate under those doomsday type of, of scenarios even mm -hmm. but we would also we would rely on them as well to give us the, the necess necessary feedback uh, out in the community of what's what's happening and they could also get word out on our behalf back to their community as well. Now, in the case of electricity, you know, some of it is overground and some of it would be damaged. Some of the, mm -hmm. you know, the grid right. essentially would be damaged mm -hmm. in a storm. Do you, do you have the same concern about the border water supply, about the, the for example, the, uh, the pumps and the pipes? The um, could yeah. it be that an earthquake, for example, would have some destructive effect on your system? And what do you, how do you know when a pipe is broken? How do you know uh, when you need to take, you know, do repair before you can pump and, and pass water through it again? 
Um, it's it's <laughs> with water in a lot of situations. It's almost a binary situation too. It, it either works or it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, you know, there's usually some catastrophic type of event, uh, like a, like with a main break situation. Mm. Um, but we are concerned about those types of disaster situations as well. Earthquakes are probably one of the. It's not something that we fear because we, there's just no way to predict it. But that could be also devastating um, because it could damage things like the reservoir tanks themselves. And if those are damaged, that, that severely hampers our ability to deliver water because all of our system is gravity fed. If we pump, all the pumps do run, they draw water from the ground, but they send it to the tanks and mm. from there gravity takes effects and that's mm. how water is delivered to homes and businesses. Yeah. You can quote me on this one. In order to deliver water, you need to have water. Wait, let me write that down again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, Maria, you had some. Yeah, yeah. So one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the recommendation of 14 gallons. It's a gallon per person per day. So okay, and the person. and the recommendation is to have a 14 day supply. Okay. So that's so where 14 the 14 gallons per person. 14 gallons per person for for an emergency. Yeah. And that becomes challenging because if you have a family of four you're talking 56 gallons. Mm -hmm. and so now we're talking about perhaps the water bath. That might be... Well, a bathtub full. Yep. If Effective. you're going to envision that. And that's survival. That's, that's basically, yeah. that's yeah. for emergency survival. Yeah. Um, yeah. That doesn't take into account all the other daily activities, I think, that you need, you need to take care of on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And so another thing is, um, so let's say you are storing some water because you don't know, for example, if you know something's going to happen right. and you want to have some in your in your home um, if you're storing it and you're disinfecting it you still have to rotate it right we what recommend is, yeah we recommend that how long so, does it last what is rotation um well what we mean by that is well let's start with um how long should it last we, if you say if you took the, the the precautions that we recommended about um adding a bit of uh clorox uh to to the water it, it could last anywhere from two weeks to a month easily uh, without too much difficulty. But because hurricanes typically, and there's no wood to not, typically a uh, hurricane, you get some advance notice. It could be days, it could be almost a week in advance. So our recommendation is if you do have water stored and it's been sitting there for a while, use it to water your plants. Um, take, you know, don't, don't waste it, but, you know, and, but use it. Rotate it out, and so when the next event comes, just go ahead and refill it. And that's what we mean by rotation. Yeah. Yeah, don't fill up a bucket and then six months later think, yeah. think that it's going to be okay. Yeah, you cannot assume it's okay. Yeah, yeah. our recommend. It, it's easy, it's inexpensive. Just go ahead and, and just yeah. use, it on, use it on your lawn. And we, we were just talking earlier about bottled water, mm -hmm. so we, we, we wondered if they had expiration dates and... It actually turned out it did. It yeah, it's an laser expiration. etched on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Maria, can you can you figure out a way to wrap this up because we're kind of out of town. I mean, out of town. We're out of it, town. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, um, you know, uh, I know you can think of something to sort of put the clinch on this, and and also to thank Robert Maria. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hope that the hurricanes that um, are out there and will be out there um, don't come to visit and we hope that this is all just an exercise you know in preparedness but water is essential mm -hmm. so I think we should take advantage of this information and the motivation to go ahead and check that we have some stored on site and we have plans for how to store more I had one question about you know when you have the instruction to conserve water ahead of time mm -hmm. You know, how far ahead? Is that two days ahead or two hours ahead? Do I have to feel the wind blowing before I stop using water? And you said it was a couple days. Yeah, so like with, um, with Lane, uh, we started putting word out two days in advance. Yeah. So you really meant at that point, don't right. Yeah, because right. you're trying to top off your reservoir mm -hmm. so that the gravity-fed system can actually um, be working without the power if necessary. Right, right, okay. right. So we're trying to just encourage people to not yeah. use water for things that could be deferred a little bit mm -hmm. later. So okay. watering yeah. your lawns and yeah. your plants. And so it all goes for the proposition that yeah. being prepared, being ready is everybody's business. Yeah. Not just the utilities or 
Flying electric or the board of water supply, it's all of us. And we all have to have in our minds the possibility and the plan, and then we have to be able to implement that intelligently. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Robert. Thank Robert you. Marita, Honolulu Board of Water Thank Supply. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maria Tomei. Thank you so much, you guys. Thanks. Hello.